A very warm welcome back, everybody. We're coming to you live from Tanganya in Umkababa, south of Durban. This is one of the many communities that has been affected by the recent floods. Well, while the biggest cost, of course, is the loss of life, well, the, uh, uh, the authorities have revised the figure to 435 souls that have been lost in the recent devastation caused by the floods. But I suppose then the biggest cost is the loss of livelihoods for so many of these residents here. And they've lost their houses, they've lost their clothes they've lost their books and of course i'm going to ask my colleague Bumele to, to, to just pin around to give us a sense of how the devastation has been so this is where this is the remains of a community member's house uh, which was completely destroyed and i can see there's uh, there's blankets here underneath the rubble there's uh, couches there's books there's even groceries because they've lost totally everything as a result of this uh, uh, devastation caused by the floods and uh, and i'll also get a sense on twitter one of the residents has also threatened that uh, they will be embarking on a protest action and has given an ultimatum uh, to the authorities, a seven-day ultimatum, that is, uh, that if they don't restore water in seven days, then they will be embarking on a protracted strike. And I'm going I'm to be in conversation uh, with the councillor uh, to, to, to see what measures uh, they've taken to avert the strike. But uh, before we do that, I can see uh, throngs of residents are now flocking here to site where, you, where we are uh, to share their voice to share their experiences about these recent floods and uh, the kind of assistance that uh, government has uh, extended to them. But now, let me welcome the councillor of this area, Mr. Atham Kopoz. Atham Kopoz, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning. Good morning to you, Zimpel. Uh, certainly, uh, the, the the cost of the the, the damage, the damage uh, uh, cannot be you know uh, cannot be equated in rands and cents. Well, at least at this moment. Yeah. But but uh, and they've been moved uh, to a location in Ultra City. Just give us more details. Well, the the situation indeed, as you mentioned, that uh, the devastation indeed has impacted even this community more than uh, 50 houses. That have been have perished they've been washed away uh, through these devastations and as you can see if you pulled it out in fact as you can see from where i'm sitting there is a car that is also stuck in inside there mm -hmm. so not only couch and the uh, fridges and all that is destroyed but even uh, movables like cars and others are stuck because what has happened here is something that is really uh, unexplainable because the entire road itself it took a different shape it moved to the other side of the road yes. uh, the church itself where it is mm. it's where the road was yes yeah so where are the residents been moved to we the currently we've moved uh, some of the residents at uh, shell ultra city where uh, there is a shelter that we've organized for them uh, so that they, they can be able to commune there for the for the for the meantime so that we can be able to organize any form of assistance from them as we are currently appealing uh, we're appealing to different uh, uh, donors or anyone who can assist uh, so that they are able to uh, so what to form end. of assistance have they given as they seek refuge or temporary refuge there Currently, there's been a different organization that have been coming in, uh, giving food, and the different business people who have been coming in and giving food, including disaster from the city, uh, so that they meet these people halfway. Uh, yesterday, uh, uh, the legislature of Wazulna, led by the speaker, came by as well here to see, and also they committed that they will ask uh, the Minister of Housing, uh, 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 Honorable SB, to also come and see, because what we believe that while we are they are there at the shelter it might not be conducive for a longer time to yes. keep them there so there is a need for us to arrange any other temporary way so we are directly engaging with uh, the, the 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 speaker's uh, office of the legislature so that we can link the MEC to come as well and see so that we can find those alternatives remember also this area is also falling under the traditional uh, leadership so also issues of land issues are also issues of considerations yes. uh, if we were to talk about how do we move people but in a nutshell, really, what has happened here is, uh, is one catastrophic. It moved, uh, uh, cemeteries as well have moved, and the roads have moved completely. The house and this, this church, actually, as it stands now, it has moved from its initial position, mm. where you can see from that uh, pole, there is a road. In yes. fact, there's supposed to be a road crossing by where the church is. Yeah. Yeah. So, do we know how many families uh, have been affected by the floods and uh, do you know how many lives have been lost, especially in this community? 
for now, we, people we have asked uh, the community as well for people to report and also to come and uh, to our offices and also register their uh, names and also uh, mention, uh, bring us also the photograph and also where we send our our team to go and see. Uh, currently, they are sitting at 187 people mm -hmm. who have been affected by this storm, but we have housed about uh, 65 people in a, 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 a Shell Ultra City who have okay. completely have no place to sleep or to, to stay on. Okay, we're out of time, unfortunately. But before I let you go, I see that uh, electricity poles are down and I'm told that uh, there is no water. This area has run out of water and uh, residents here are threatening to go on a strike and has given authorities a seven-day ultimatum mm -hmm. to restore water or else all hell will break loose. We have been uh, inundated with different pickets and stuff and, and strikes about water because currently it seems that the city does not have a capacity to really to stretch more than what it have. Three water tankers for 35,000 a, a population is a bit a, a, a small but we are appealing that if they can add more but we are hoping that the progress of fixing the pipe that is affecting this community because that's the issue we are appealing to people to be patient with us currently okay. the city is fixing the pipe that that provides fit in this area of water well councillor we certainly hope that uh, you will be in conversation with the community members and uh, communicate such information to them because we can't afford to have a strike well at least uh, as the community is picking up the pieces and counting the losses as a result of these floods. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Well, that was uh, Councillor Atamko Bozi, and who's been sh sharing with us uh, his plans for the community to, to, to try and, uh, you know, provide temporary assistance to the residents that have been affected by the floods. And as we've mentioned, there is a church right here, right next to me, where which was moved from its initial position to about 30 meters downhill, and it was left unaffected without a single crack on the wall. From all of us here, thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to hand back to studio.